All right, good evening. And it's January 24th, 2019. And uh, Ron may or may not be able to make it tonight. Um, he's running a little bit late, so I'm going to try to give this a go. What I've decided to do, if you saw my tweet, um, I was only planning on doing f uh, three tonight. Um, if, and I don't know how it got discovered, but uh, maybe I was putting my big cartel page up. And before I could announce on Twitter that I was going to take three, I had five and I had to shut it down. So uh, I'm going to stick with the three. I actually have, I've went ahead and drawn them out. So I'll show you what we got. Had a couple of repeats. So I'm going to work on them. Captain America. Yet another Captain America and a Thor. Hey, Ron. Boom. You driving? I figured I'm just going to go for three to tonight for tonight. And I will do the other two and the free one tomorrow night. That way it'll hopefully it'll even out all out. And for those of you who have not entered yet, the way you can uh, enter to be part of the free drawing for a free head sketch tomorrow night is go to episode one of these quick draws and you'll find out what the rules are. Um, basically, it's leave a comment then there's a secret word and uh, then you let me know who you would like for me to draw. Should you be the one that's picked in the random in the randomizer app online that we use? Can't remember which one it is. There's a few out there, and they're they're actually pretty cool. They work really well. So I figured I would go ahead and get started. Um, if Ron makes it in, that would be fantastic. He's headed home now, he says. So he will probably at least get to come in for a little bit. It's always good to have a helping hand when you're, when you're doing this. Sometimes the, the work in the chat can be a bit overwhelming without somebody kind of monitoring the chat. So he is a, a big help, been a big help to me uh, being able to, to read chat and ask questions that you all, you know, forward questions so I can kind of keep my eyes front and center. Big asset. So the interesting thing, Kyla, <laughs> how you doing? I see you got your name changed. Good to finally see you. Noah the Hyper Potato, how you doing? Ron is actually not in the chat right now, but um, he's he's working on um, on getting home from work so he can join in and. Uh, I'm working on doing three tonight. Um, busy day, busy tomorrow. So I'll do the other two tomorrow night. And um, with the free one. So I see you finally figured out how to get your name changed. Very good. Now I know who I'm speaking to. <laughs> well, thank you. I have been on a, a little bit of a roll. I think uh, 
I think exercising these daily muscles has started showing um, progress. I think the three live streams that I did Monday helped me get back into uh, a nice groove. Um, with Jacob being sick, uh, didn't didn't draw much for like two or three days, but he's pretty much uh, he's he's just finishing off his his meds, so he will stay well. <laughs> yeah. So, Kyla, you're in the Bay Area, correct? Trying to remember, I was out there for a comic convention in 2017. Yep, I was there. I believe it was 2017. When the, uh, when the people that put on a Tampa Bay show here, they spread out to a few places and had one in in San Fran and it was a really really good show they're they're no longer there because um apparently the is it the Moscone Center they're they they kind of don't want consumer conventions held there the first one was at a hotel a nice hotel, um, but they had to section it all off, which is not not idea for a comic book convention. But it did work. Um, it had been five years since uh, San Francisco had a comic convention proper, and I'll tell you, I was glad I was there because um, it was it was it was madness, complete madness. Hey, I would, you know, I I would love to come back. Um, let's see. Uh, I know you know Von Glitschka. I've known him for quite some time. I think that may have been where I saw your work the first time is on something that he had shared or liked or something. I can't remember. Or Chris Doe. And I did, I finally got to meet Chris Doe, um, 2017. So it's been a year, October of 2017. I was out there for a LA Comic Con. And we had kind of been a little bit in touch because, you know, he's a comics fan. And I asked him, hey, you know, could I... Could I come by the office and meet you? And he said, yeah. And then he put me on his show, <laughs> unbeknownst to me. But I did it. Um, and the most interesting thing to me is I, he made me nervous. I have never been nervous around anyone, but around Chris, I did not know what to say. Didn't know what to do. I saw the other people from 
the future coming in, said hi to Ben, hi to Greg Gunn, all the people I knew from just YouTube. And I even told Ben, I have no idea. I said, Ben, I meet hundreds of people a year. I have no problem talking to people, but I said, I am, I am like actually nervous to meet Chris. Yes, it's true. I know. That's what I said. And, uh, and I told Chris, I said, I said, dude, look, I am, I am nervous. And I said, this is totally unlike me. Um, and I couldn't explain it, and I still can't. So, yeah. Then, uh, you know, I, I, I made sure the guys and everybody there at the future had... Uh, had some passes for the LA show and Ben and Chris came by and I was at their office on Friday and I was fine until about an hour before Chris and Matthias came by my booth and my voice started going. <laughs> and so I don't know if my vocal cords tightened up in that short amount of time or what. But I could barely talk, so it was very, very odd. GLHG, good evening. Joe, how you doing? Good to see you all. Thanks for turning out. And Kyla, yes, it was it was really it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's true. Hey, there's Ron. Uh, Ron, are you still driving? Because I'd hate for you to be home and not, not get in here on the chat. Kyla, yep. Good to know you were razzmatazz this whole time. Um... It's nice to know that some people that you follow on other social media are are hanging in the room with you. And one day we'll have to have that in-person meeting, hang out, and have a good laugh at stuff. You know, uh, Kyla, you were in Orlando. I think I saw you, uh, was it 
last just last December 2008 and I'm just over here in Daytona Beach so had I known that um, could have maybe uh, had a cup of coffee or grabbed a quick dinner or something with my son wife and hung out my son wife that, that doesn't sound right let me uh, my son and my wife Hello, Eldon. Good evening to you. <laughs> Snow blowing that yard, Joe. Yeah, let's see. I don't think I've ever had to snowblow a yard, so I'm good with that. Uh, two nights, yeah. Okay. Oh, you won a contest. That's interesting. Hey, AG. Good evening. I guess I never win any contests because most of them are free trips to Orlando. <laughs> and uh, that does me no good. So why enter? All right, definitely do that. Hey, I think everybody needs to have a little vacation in Florida. Just don't don't come when you see a hurricane. Although you never know. We had a very uh very rough morning, lots of wind and thunder and lightning uh this morning. So, and what are you going to do?
I guess I'm rid of this mail off my phone. Okay. Hey, Chris. Hey, Ken. Uh, I'm doing two more tonight, another cap and a Thor. And then tomorrow, um, I'm going to be doing a... Uh, a Nick Fury... And I think, believe it or not, another Punisher. At least that's what the request was for. I think people are trying to break me of my phobia of drawing the Punisher. So we'll see. I don't know. Uh, Green Lantern on episode one of these quick head draws, I did a Punisher, the very last one, if you want to go back and watch it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't Mike Zek's Punisher, and that's that's kind of my my problem. Is I want it to be Mike Zek's Punisher, but it's not. So I kind of get um kind of get uh. A little, you know what? I was going to put some blacks on his mask and stuff. That's why I had these other shapes in here. So I guess I should go ahead and start doing that. Um, kind of, kind of let that slip my mind.
So get back on track with it. Yeah, check it out. Uh, no C2E2 for me, Chris. In fact, the last time I was in the Chicago area, I think it was just a Chicago Comic Con. Um, back in the 90s sometime, I want to say, I'm going to guess 94, I think. And it was, you you know, if you have some history there, you might know who, I think the guy also promoted Motor City Comic Con, the red haired guy. Uh, I think I did that Motor City show for him the same year. Pork chops and sauerkraut time. Wow, AG's eating good. Uh, Chris uh, says, who is the toughest penciler that I've ever had to ink? Hmm, well, let me think. There's various degrees of, you know, what I would call toughness. Um, there's the I'm intimidated by this penciler toughness. There's the, this person, and notice I'm just saying this person. This person doesn't, you know, doesn't thrill me to have to ink it, but I'm professional and it's a job and uh, they're doing a fill-in, like maybe an issue or two on the book because the regular penciler is off and maybe it was my monthly book to ink, so... I kind of have to do it. Um, so I can't really say, and to be honest with you, I, you know, like I said, it's each person that, that I would deem tough would have their own um, kind of little set of what I would consider why, what makes them hard to ink. Or just not fun. So having said that, I think I'll just uh, leave it um, at a nice uh, professional courtesy that I won't get into like, um, you know, naming names. No need.
I will state for the record, though, that I have to I have had to deal with a few prima donna pencilers who um, who wanted to tell me um, why I was not inking their work right and how it should be worked and. Basically, at that point, I just talk to the editor and tell them, take me off this book <laughs> before it gets ugly. And is it kidney lady? No, it is a junk call. I believe. Let me check to make a hundred percent sure. Well, they didn't even give a uh, give me the courtesy of hanging up on them, but. Must have been a junk call. Hmm. So let's see. Whose pencils did you, meaning me, royally mess up, and how did you fix it? It is. It, it is Kyla. <laughs> junk call must be Jared. Um. Well. Messed up in what way? I, I don't, you know, I don't set out to mess anybody's pencils up. If you mean accidentally messed up, um, I mean, I've spilled ink on pages that I've had to go in and clean up. Uh, when I first got into the business, I was, I had a Carmine Infantino job. And this was back before I had a photocopy machine. I took it to the, uh, blueprint place where I used to get photocopies made because they were the only ones at that time that could do uh, oversized copy and <laughs> the guy the guy didn't have 11 by 17 paper but he would trim it uh, with his paper trimmer so you probably already know where this is going Luckily, it was only one page. Cut it right in half when he cut the uh, photocopies. And he came out holding two pieces of paper up and said, I'm really sorry. And then proceeded to charge me for the copies. Didn't even get a... You know, no charge for those since I've earned your original. So I went home, called the editor, told him what had happened. Thought I was really going to get an earful. But basically what it boiled down to was um, tape it together. It's going to run, you know, I guess they'd ran into this problem before. I never had. So they said, hey, it's going to run in the, you know, wherever it's cut, wherever you tape it together in the back. And then just white out, do the best you can. That was it. So pretty, pretty easy process. Um was not fun. I mean, that drive home was, I was thinking of every horrible thing. That I was going to encounter from my editor, but they were very understanding.
Um, how do I get the ink off after the spill? That's a good question. Um, depending on how big the spill is, uh, electric eraser or whiteout, or that's why I make photocopies, uh, re-ink the panel and on another piece of Bristol and then send that in with the, uh, like if I drop my brush and it would roll down and just what knocks out one panel, then I just patch it. I send in a patch. So I, I, I never really had like a, um, uh, maybe besides that page being cut in half, I never really had like a serious, um, I have no idea uh, what to do accident. So I've, I guess I've been pretty lucky in hindsight. Pretty lucky indeed. And I will say, uh, you know, having actual evidence of, of what you've done is, is good because I've, you know, People have used excuses like spilling ink on a page or pages that they've not had done. They need in a re ink them and they're going to be late and stuff like that. And of course, they can't show the pages that were that were actually damaged. So, I've heard stories and. Um, that always made me know better to to try to pull the wool over someone's eyes that was just doing their job and making sure that the book stayed on time.
The most difficult job. Uh, <laughs> All right, so Ron's not here tonight, so I'm getting a lot of questions, figures. Um, most difficult, I, I'm going to have to say, and I, I did wind up turning it down. Well, it was a no-brainer to turn it down, and it was a job I was already working on. Uh, it was Secret Wars number 12. It was decided, to my knowledge, at the 11th hour, that the story needed to be wrapped up in like 32 pages instead of 22. Mike Zek had drawn, I think, 18 that I had. And he was he was actually in Florida hanging out at my at my house with my family at the time. Um, so he was going back to Connecticut. I get a call from um, Tom DeFalco and Tom wants me to, you know, Marvel's going to fly me up to New York, put me in a hotel suite, uh, kind of give me a, a key to a dungeon, so to speak, you know, they'll bring me food. Or I can, you know, I'll just have room service. I can order food when I'm hungry. And I'm just going to work until I until I need to sleep and get the book done. And this was after a year of extremely high stress deadlines, et cetera, et cetera. So, no, that did not happen. At that point, I told, I had to let Tom know that that I would do what I had on hand and they were going to have to find other people if they needed it that fast because I was already um, pretty much dead for the year and had enough. The war, The war was over for me. I mean, all throughout the book, they were making changes anyway. So me not finishing 12 in my eyes didn't, you know, looking back on it, um, I kind of hate seeing all the changes that were made. Now, a lot of those were done after I turned work in and I didn't see what was changed until after it was printed. So, but I began, I began to expect it, um, So at that, you know, at that point, it just becomes a matter of, you know, literally what is the point of, of me um, killing myself, literally killing myself for a book that's, you know, it's already been changed around a lot artistically. So that was probably, um, uh, you know, the most difficult thing I've been asked to do. Uh, Chris wants to know, have I ever had the desire to pencil ink your own book? And have I created characters of my own? Yes and yes. I, I penciled Batman 555. I thought I would be doing the inking on it and... I found out about halfway through that I wasn't going to be able to ink it, so I kind of lost interest in it because I had been penciling it specifically for me to ink. Sal Buscema wound up inking it. Uh, he did a good job with what I had turned in for pencils. I had planned on kind of tweaking a few things as I inked it. So.
I guess I should have been a little more clear or, you know, had, had, had DC and I, and I been a more, a little more clear, I should have known going in if I was going to ink it or not, because that would have changed some of the approach I took. I kind of left some of my pencils open for me to interpret when I was going to be inking it and when that didn't happen then um, Sal didn't interpret a lot of what I did and no fault to him you know, I got no hard feelings on it uh, he was given a job he turned it in and that was that Let's see. And yes, I have some creator-owned characters. Oh, okay, Joe. I just saw that. Um, I do have some creator-owned characters, and hopefully, I keep saying this. I've they've they've been in my back pocket since two thousand and ten. And Craig Zablo and myself have a, we kind of have an eight page ash can story, like a little introduction fleshed out. But I think we need to go back over it again. Because there's a few things we keep second guessing or maybe third guessing on. And I just want to make sure it's, it's the right way to release it. Ashcans used to be, I guess, more popular uh, in the 90s. You know, you'd see an ash can for a book coming out or something, and basically it's it's just a few pages, a little overview of what the actual, you know, bigger book is going to be about. And I I enjoyed them, you know, especially, you know, I think, I, I think we're doing it because um, although I do think it's a good idea, it's the easiest way to get something out there without uh, without spending a lot of money. So, so yeah, um, that's something that might come to fruition this year. And it might not, so. <laughs> but hopefully uh, find time to work on it and fit it in and get that project moving because truthfully, I I think it's a, a I think it's an obvious concept, but I also think it's a good concept. amazing uh i just just got a little notification i was tagged by a friend of mine that i went to high school with and one of the reasons being is this year is our 40th reunion Oof. <laughs> that'll send a chill up your spine whenever you get there if you do 40 years out of high school. Wow. Where did four decades go? 
Enjoy it, kids. I was 25 once, too. Still feel like I am, but I know I'm not. Now, let's see. Kyla asks, what do I do to recharge my creative batteries? Um, normally, what I do is go back to people who influenced me um, to begin with and look at their work again. Because sometimes it's easy to get away from uh, your influences but I believe that they're still there. Um, they just may not be as obvious as when you first start out because you're, at least for me, I'm trying to do as much um, like them as possible because their work spoke to me in some way. So I will go back like I, I'll pull out this J.C. Leindecker book of mine and look through it and get all excited about it and how great he was. And it kind of gets frustrating at the same time. Um, but it also, you know, shows me how good somebody can be. And so, yeah, I... I kind of like to pull out the stuff that that really that really got me going to begin with and and revisit it and you know I know it 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 might sound kind of like weird or backwards but it tends to work for me um gets me excited again and I the other thing is I try to find somebody's work that's new that I haven't discovered before and start looking at a lot of stuff they've done and see what they're doing. So I guess uh, old and new, you know, I get old influence and I get something new that excites me that somebody's doing and kind of get get the two kind of like uh <laughs> put my peanut butter in the in the chocolate you kind of do a Reese's peanut butter cup I guess. I, I don't think that's the best way I could have put that, but it's all I got, Kyla. I, I do, I got to say, I enjoy both. I enjoy uh, revisiting the artists who were a big influence on me and then I enjoy trying to find somebody new or somebody showing me something and I'm like wow you know where'd this person come from you know what are they working on and then searching out their work and seeing you know because sometimes you can see one thing and it's just fantastic and then you look at their whole body of work and you're like well, wait a minute you know and I get it you know I'll be like I like you know, say you see a job they did 
and I'll use a comic book. You know, I'll see a graphic novel or a mini series or something they did, and I'll be like, wow, this stuff is really great. And I'll see another job, and I'll be like, well, you know, what what's the difference? Why Why isn't this one giving me the same feeling? And that could just be, you know, their own personal growth, too. So kind of have to be careful with that because, you know, me, you, uh, as you know, as an artist, we're constantly um, wanting to experiment and get out of our comfort zone. But there does become that, um, that style that you are kind of known for and it's scary to step out of it for the fear of you're going to lose the people that that like your work but on the other hand you might pick up more people who enjoy the new stuff you're doing i think i'm going to soften uh soften this head shadow up a little bit if i can it's it's not going in the direction of my or normal hand flow, so well, that's not bad though. If I can, that's a little better. I could just make it crisp. I'll just make it crisp. This big brush is close to being replaced. It's got uh, it's got a few bristles that are beginning to stand out a bit too much. I do like it when I can get the nice dry brush effect with it, but um, it's getting close to where I'm going to have to dump it, I guess. Yeah, no problem, Kyla. That's like I said, that that seems to work for me. Um, All right. So first Captain America down for the evening. And let's see. Chris says, is there any chance to reserve a spot? Sketch for it's too late. I swear I have the worst timing when these spots go up. Um, yeah, Chris. Uh, shoot me an email at john at johnbadyart.com. I'll probably do these again Monday and I'll save a spot for you. And Kyla says that's true. It's also nice to learn more about the artists than just their artwork alone. Yep. It gives me a sense of who they are, what drives them and how it reflects their work. That's very true. Okay, so which pin do I got here? I'm going to go with the, nope. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I did see there's a cartoonist from France, illustrator whose work I love, Yves Chaland. And he got hit by a car or something and died at like age maybe 34, 35. And what a talented, incredible genius. And the body of work he left behind is phenomenal. And uh, so I think they're finally coming out. It's going to be the clip I saw 
was in French, hopefully they will do subtitles. And I'm not sure exactly when it's going to be released. But that's somebody who, believe it or not, was a big influence on my work. And I don't know that much about his life. So this documentary, well, I kind of do. I have some books. I'll show you the, I got these long time ago. Um, and this is the book, this one, Shaland. Um, let me just move this out of the way. Kyle, I think you'd really um, love this guy's work. Let me get into some of the art. This is him. This was a portfolio. Um, trying to find something. Here we go. You know, he's got like this stuff going on. And not this one, but I think I do have another book where I look at this stuff. It's just beautiful. He did cartooning, gouache paintings, um, so much work. And yeah, so all this stuff is noted in years and stuff. And then I believe somewhere in here, this is all in French, which I can't read. This is like the timeline. And then here is the English version in the back, which is great. But um, very bold, expressive pen and brush line work. Um, all right, uh, GL. Yeah, let me show you um, another one real quick. Uh, and uh, there's another artist out there who's similar. His name is Serge, S-E-R-G-E, Clerk. C-L-E-R-C. -E Again, Shaland and it's Eves, Y-V-E-S. Um, if you know of Stuart Ng books, he might have these. Um, trying to get to some pages. But man, this stuff is just uh, beautiful. And these are big oversized. They're probably like 11 by 14 or 9 by 12 or something like that volumes of work. Um, this is his adventure character, uh, Freddie Lombard. Just great cartooning. And, and the way he poses uh, and, and, you know, lays out a scene, the compositions are just fantastic. So... He's one that will always be in my uh, in my influences, even though sometimes it's not as noticeable. All right, so one cap is done. Do I do the other cap and then do Thor, or do I Thor? I think uh, I'll stick with cap. Get the caps knocked out. You could probably Google him online and find some stuff. Might be a good way to um, see if you can't uh, uh, take a look at some of his stuff. Because I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not 100% sure if those books are still available. And if they are, I'm, I'm not sure what the price of them uh, would be right now. I know they were sort of expensive when I bought them. 
and I'm gonna say forty or fifty dollars, maybe a hundred for that that other one at the time because they are imports. But I don't. I, I like I said, I don't know if they're still readily available or not. That's true, Kyla. You got it. Um, I used to try to get uh, a little more uh, blatant with my influences and in some work until <laughs> until the editors didn't like it. Till they'd be like, "What? What are you doing here? What is this?" You know. And I'd be like, oh, uh, I was just experimenting. And they're like, yeah, don't do that. So that's why I say you kind of get pigeonholed into a commercial style. And then your experimentation might be, uh, might not be appreciated by the people that are hiring you to do work. So I just learned to tone it back a little bit. When in fact, I probably, all things being equal and knowing what I know now, of course, I probably should have just ramped it up and went higher. But, you know, when you're, when you're in your 20s and you wanted to do comics your whole life and you're doing them and somebody says jump, you just ask him how high. Now looking back at that, I'm like, you know, I wish I would have known then, but I know now. Because I could have been on a whole different, uh, could have been on a whole different career path about now. Not that comics was bad to me. I won't say that. It's been very good. I'm just saying in certain ways, I did tend to let it dictate, um, you know, what kind of chances I was willing to take. <laughs> yeah, that's my sister sending me a text. I think that I hope that's the reminder ding and not another one. Uh, nope, that was another one. So the reminder bell will chime in shortly. Pay no attention to the lady behind the bell. So Kyla, when are you going to start your YouTube channel so we can see you draw? Or are you too shy? I don't know. I, I, I don't get shyness from you. But maybe.
<laughs> well, hey, why not? I have been, I, I wanted to start this channel, um, uh, I wanted to start my channel earlier in the year, like at the beginning of the year, I was getting ready to launch it and it just, uh, well, 2018, let me qualify that. And I kept putting it off, and then one day I was fixing to do some work, and I I had a camera, and I had my laptop, and I was just like, hey, you know what? Let me just see what happens. And so you have probably seen AG in here. I was working away, and AG came into the room. And I started asking him, could he hear me? How did I sound? I'm still working with, you know, not the best equipment, but for right now, it's it's getting me by. I would like to have a better microphone and stuff like that. But <laughs> That's true. All right, keep me posted. Hey, I I think you work in do you ever work in Procreate because you can do that little uh Recording capture. I mean, that's like automatic, I think, and that's pretty cool. I did, well, I'm sure you remember, I did some of those on my Instagram. That's a great little feature of, of that thing. I haven't done any in a while. I've been really bad on Instagram. I've been spending all my time with YouTube. I have not looked at Instagram in over a week right now. I I know when I go on it, it's just going to be like a long scroll. I probably can't get through it all. I need to catch up. Isaac, what's going on?
Ah, very good, Kyla. Can never get enough of that. Although I haven't been in a while, uh, there used to be a weekly figure drawing class here in the Daytona Beach area. I don't think it's still it used to be at the Art League. I don't think they still do it. Okay, Ken, uh, do you, can you give me his name or is he going to let me, let me know that, um, that, that you sent him? And by the way, people, uh, if you go watch episode one of Drawing Quickie Head Sketches, episode one, if you want to win a free head sketch tomorrow to enter, all you have to do is leave a comment on the comment section with your favorite head sketch that I drew on that episode and maybe tell me why if you if you can. Um, and then there's a secret ward. And after that secret ward, do an equal sign or a colon or some other thing and separate that. And let me know if you win, what character you would like to, uh, to have me draw for you. We're going to do that tomorrow night. So it should be a good time. Free free head sketch if you happen to win. And feel free to leave comments on any of the videos, please. And don't forget a thumbs up on your way out whenever you just decide to leave. Even if it's all the way to the bitter end. Even better. Watch time value. Appreciate it. Hey, Kaz. Good evening to you. Okay, Ken. 10-4 on that. <laughs> Party rock with me. That's right. There you go.
<laughs> right here. Having, having one right now. I saw, uh, it's been a few videos ago, but I saw Matthew uh, from the future drinking a, uh, a lime one. That used to be my flavor until, like I said, I, I discovered the, the lemon. I like lime better than lemon, but on the sparkling water, I got I to gotta say the lemon, the lemon's been my favorite. <laughs> that's a that's a long URL. Wow, what's the most important big idea that you've learned in life in or out of comics and why is it important? Hmm, that's a big question that I don't know if I could answer. Because I, I don't want to neglect any part of my life that's important and I... I've really learned important big things in all aspects of my life. But let's see. I, I can only go by what, you know, and this is going to, because I'm I'm not at that point yet because I know and I don't know anybody um, who could say differently but I think uh, I would say that you know if you have that chance if you know you're gonna die you know let's say you're on your deathbed instead of just a freak accident that takes you out and now this this is not like me just being morbid. This is me being like, you know, answering your question as, as honest as, as possible is um it's a thing it's the thing you hear over and over is being able to honestly have lived your life with no regrets and I don't think anybody can can make that statement. But I, you know, that would be something to me that, that you know, because you always hear about 
people on their deathbed. Uh, you know, I wish I spent more time with my family. I wish I would have traveled more. I wish I would have done more in this area of my life or that area. So I think, I think you're always going to have regrets. So I think I've learned that, you know, you should try to live your life so that you don't wind up having those regrets. But uh, realistically, I kind of think that's impossible. So as many times as I hear it, I still does not compute, so to speak. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Um, I think it did. I think if we could go through life and not have regrets, uh, it would be, I don't know. It would be interesting, but I think we learn from regrets. But it's always a thing that you hear people, you know, if they had any final words, they always like, I regret this or I regret that. So maybe the idea is to just, uh, you know, even if you have regrets, don't, don't, don't take them to the grave with you. Just realize that you lived your life and it may not have been your, your, you know, your perfect life, your best life, whatever life, but you lived it and you enjoyed it and you don't want to have any regrets. But like I said, we know that's not going to happen. Hey, no problem. And I, I, you know, I, I imagine that, you know, even though we have regrets, I think maybe bigger than that is if we don't, if we try not to dwell on those regrets, if we try to learn from them and put them behind us, even though we're going to have them, um, they'll be a lot less painful if we, if we learn to let go and realize we're human. We make mistakes. Um, and that we learn from those regrets. I keep thinking tonight is Friday. It's very quiet. 
here in the whole office building. I did hear the girls down below in the uh, salon. They are now gone. It's uh, around 8.30ish. So I guess they had their last appointments. And I'm the only one in the building. All four stories. <laughs> and I'll be the first one here tomorrow. Well, maybe not. Jacob to school, wife to work, then I'll get in here. So... So I won't be the first tomorrow. Usually I am. Usually the next person to show up is the handyman. His name is also John and he gets in at 7 or shortly thereafter. It does feel like Friday. That's right. You do miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Michael Jordan, right? At least I think he's the one that said that. Or it was either him or... Another basketball player, I believe. And I'd like to say, uh, for those in the room uh, that enjoy artwork, Kyla here is an illustrator. She's in the Bay Area. And uh, if you want to follow her on Twitter, I believe her twiddle, Twitter, Twiddler, <laughs> I believe her Twiddle handle, tw now I can't say it. I believe her Twitter handle is the same as her name in the room. Would that be true, Kyla? Maybe, maybe some more people would uh, would jump on board if you want them and give you a follow. Um, she's very fun, nice to talk to, and draw some pretty neat stuff. Yep, there it is. So, very friendly person, I might add. You know, maybe I should have you on here, Kyla. Would you do that one night? Would you come on and draw? Like maybe tomorrow?
Or do you got to get that webcam first so you're not just holding your phone for three hours? Because I, I do know that would be a pain. <laughs> Well, if you only have your phone, I get it. You know, you're not going to be able to really uh, hold it up for a long time. Sweaters and polos. Hey, thank you. Welcome to the room. Yeah, tomorrow, Kyla. What do you say? If you, I mean, if you got just your phone, if you don't have a stand, that's... That's very tough to do. I get it. But if you have a webcam and you want to shoot your desktop and draw some. And I see Mr. Ron has entered the room. Yes, I have. How's it going? It's going. I got uh, this cap. I'm, I'm going to put black behind him. So no blacks on it. This is my first cap that I did. Let me get him more squared up than like this. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> I'm I'm Brainiac. There we go. That was a face I was making in the mirror today. I was like, Arr! and I noticed how my jaw jutted out and my face kind of curved. And I said, I got to do that. So I kind of drew it. A stack of books to record. You mean you stack the books up and then put your phone on that? Ron, are you going to give uh, Kyla, and I'm going to try to pronounce her last name now, Seflor? M-H-N. M-M-H-M. Uh, I need Jacob here to interpret that for me. That would be my six-year-old son. He's better at the. Uh, Ron, you might know what that means. You're you're younger and hip. I am trying to see which comment you're talking about. The. M H M. All right. That's beyond me. My. My. Uh, Hmm. Don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm totally lost on that one. Well, Kyla, if you want to come on tomorrow, I think we're going to start around seven. I know you're over on the West Coast, so if you're free, shoot me an email. Uh, it's down below. Oh, like a green. Hmm. Oh, I get it. Like, here's a. Uh, mm hmm. Yeah, I would do it like. Uh, mm, mm, like that, right? Okay. No problem, uh, sweater and polos. It's kind of an interesting name. Do you know my friend Kyla here? All along, Ron, she has been, um, well, you saw the tweet. She's been, I can't remember the name now. Razmataz. Razmataz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like she never, you know, she's like, oh, I've been in your chat. So I'm, I'm Razmataz. And I was just like, never knew it. I think we've been friends online for probably close to a year now. And uh, I think she follows uh, my buddy, Chris Doe, and my real good buddy, Von Glitchka. 
I think that's, I met her through either one of those, uh, like kind of a cross pollination type thing. Come on and draw some spider stuff, uh, Kyla. The sweaters and poles, polos, wants to know how long have you been drawing for? Uh, Since seven. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, so, oh, yeah. Okay. Does she mean age wise or? Or time wise, since time wise it was seven tonight. No, I, uh, I think she means. Yeah, age wise. Lifetime. Yeah. yeah, as long as I can remember. And I'm 57, so. Well, yeah, over, you, you started yeah. on cave walls, right? I did, uh, with with uh, <laughs> sticks, sticks and stones. They can break my bones. And names will hurt me. I'm a sensitive guy sometimes, although I don't show it. Well, some people say I do. Some people can pick up on it, but I try to mask it. They just got to get a copy of your smooth jazz album you put out. What's that? They just got to get a copy of that smooth jazz album you put up. Which one is that? <laughs> well i might no i used i used to make smooth tape mixes oh yeah the search is on you know i wish i still had it because you would die uh i used to uh when i was a single man and a, and a dating man and a, a younger man i would have my uh I would have my tapes, my romantic tapes with, you know, little Barry White, little Smokey Robinson, little Commodores. I could, I, I, I could throw a, I could throw a mixtape together, romantic mixtape. <laughs> Hey, do do you have a pencil? I swear that's never happens. It's got to rewind my tape. <laughs> oh yeah. So Kyla says she does not know if she's good at talking and drawing simultaneously. She well, hasn't tried it. It's tough, but I tell you what: if you're willing to come on, uh, give it a shot because we'll be here to help you. Seriously. Right, Ron? If you are going to be here, I will do my best to at least watch. Well, but see, you're kind of the voice because I don't think Zablo is going to. I know. Well, I talked to him today and Zay, he was telling me, he said when he has his retirement party, he's <laughs> it's going to be rules that it starts at three in the afternoon. He said, "Cause those people want to go on all night. They're they're like you know getting that last party on. Sweaters and Polo says that they're subscribed. They enjoy your work. Oh, appreciate that very much. And uh, sweaters and polos. If you go back to episode one, uh, that was. And I'm trying to. When was that? Tuesday or Monday? No, this Tuesday." Week. Yeah, Tuesday, you'll see something about Quickhead Sketches Episode 1. I kind of retitled them today. Um, you could win a free sketch tomorrow night. Don't have to be present to win. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to put the name of the person who wins in the cast and, and the information afterwards. But all I ask is that you go through and leave a comment on uh, what was your favorite piece that night and why. And then there's a secret ward. I won't give you the secret ward. It's, it's, in, the, it's in there enough. 
And that's got over 200 views now, that video. Um, so get the secret ward and then put the comic book character that you like the most. And if, if your name comes up in the random picker, you will... I'll be doing your sketch tomorrow night. And if you're in the room, it'll be even better. Kyla, that goes for you too. Even though you're going to be on the, uh, or maybe you already did under Razzmatazz, although I don't remember that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Nope. Wetter says, neat. I'm going to get something to eat. Enjoyed the stream. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the subscription. Um, enjoy your, your dinner, your lunch, whatever your time zone is. I guess right about now, though, it's pretty pretty much dinner for everyone, even if you're West Coast, unless you're out of the country. You could be having breakfast. You could. You're out of the country, breakfast. you could be having anything. Breakfast for dinner. Well, that's true. I see. Now there's a twist. Why would anybody eat anything else? I don't know. I used to like I used to like that. I used to like to eat a little breakfast for dinner. All right. So, Ron, I have no idea what happened. I did not. I just said before I took Bella to work that I might do three. When I got to my office, I was making the page. I published it thinking, OK, I haven't announced it. No one's going to, you know, and I'm trying to trying to figure out how to put the count on it because I I upgraded my big cartel for 10 to ten dollars a month so I could actually put like five are available and once those five are sold for that day then it it puts the sold out before i was doing it manually mm -hmm. and i didn't want anyone to double up and get me in trouble and i'd be doing like eight or nine or ten in a night or trying like i did before many times um but uh so i thought i had it set right and i hit publish and then Within like two minutes, bing, you know, an order comes in. I'm like, somebody must have just been passing by. I don't know what happened, but I swear within five or ten minutes, all five were gone. And I, I, I was like, what happened? And none of them were from anybody following you on Twitter? No, and I thought maybe Big Cartel, like when I upgraded my account, maybe it like – automatically tweeted it out like one of my old settings or something um but it didn't so i have no idea so that's how i wound up with five I think Kyla's deciding on whether or not she wants to get into trouble tomorrow night or if she wants to stay on the DL and just watch. She's nervous. We I'm telling you, we'll walk you through it. You'll 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 be laughing by the end of the night. Or did she make up her decision? Ah, uh, she says, let's see. I don't know. Okay, she read that. You read that. He is the people's choice. So I got that cap. I got cap with a little more, you know, got little kind of rule here. Not so many blacks. Black behind him, pops him forward. Blacks on the thing. Maybe leave the blacks out. Kind of works both ways. 
Dun, 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 That's pretty cool. That's my animation for the night. Thank you very much. It's a great job. <laughs> I'd buy that. <laughs> now Tyler we gotta... wants to know if it has to be tomorrow. Uh, no. Um, well, I mean, we are doing this tomorrow, but um, hey, if you got a date or something, I get it. You know, I know you're uh, you're out there in the Bay Area, and you probably have better things to do. But it was just an invite, just to get you going. Just so you'll have some people to help you out. So you won't be like me on that first one. Man, I'm so lucky AG came around and was able to sound check and answer questions like, you know, am I in focus? Stuff like that. Ken says, these profiles are growing on me. It's nice to change the perspective of the art. Well, you know, um, I think Thor also makes a, a good profile. I'm going to get this nice, you know, wing going on and then the hair. And it just, uh, I dig the profiles too. I Not that they're, they're really kind of, like I said, they're not easier. And in many ways, they're kind of harder. Kind of. But I, too, I, Jay, if you notice Jay Lee's stuff, he does a lot of profiles, a lot of um, even his full figure work is very uh, profile driven and it's very strong. Do you like Jay Lee's work, Ron? Well, I, I like what you've showed me, and I'm looking forward to seeing him at Heroes Con. Yep. And man, that guy is fast. I mean, it's he's a real he's a real nice guy too. But it's sickening how fast he is on these sketches. So Kyla says it's very kind of you, John. Perhaps we can schedule another date instead so I can be mentally prepared. Okay. I'm used to being rejected. <laughs> Uh, Heroes Con this year is June 14th, 15th, and 16th, I believe. Right, Ron? 14, 15, 16. There you go. John Beatty and Mike Zek will be there. Michael Golden and a horde of other fantastic comic creators. A proverbial, it's like, it's almost like the comic industry you would think would shut down during that weekend because there's so many uh, fantastic, talented people at that show. It is a heck of a lineup. Yep. Ken wants to know where it is this year. Oh, it's same Heroes. Uh, Heroes Con is always in Charlotte, North Carolina. So it is a real down south 
Southern Hospitality Show. And it is uh, very affordable and very comics, um, very comics oriented. I mean, I don't think there's anything remotely uh, media or um uncomics related is there ron i think pretty much it's it's so solid comics it's great comics and art it's gonna be fantastic yep. hey kyla says thanks for the night john i gotta start cooking dinner what are we having <laughs> i like to ask you what, the, what what's for dinner it's like food I can, I can go for some food right about now hey ken says Wizard World Philly is the same weekend. Don't waste your time. You heard it here first. The the ticket Ron got his on a Black Friday special. I sure did. All three days cost you what, Ron? It was like 30 bucks, right? 25, 30 bucks? Yeah. And I think even full price, it's like, is it 15 or 20 a day? Full price, the three days are 50 bucks. There you go. And I had plans to be there for the whole weekend. Get a yeah. room. There you go. If you're more into the media, then go to Wizard World. If you're into comic art and getting sketches, looking at a bunch of old books and, and maybe filling in some gaps in your collection, if you if it's true Comic Con you're looking for Heroes Con. Now, have you ever heard of Dragon Con? Me? Yeah. 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 Jared does that. And what's your take on that? Um, I've never done it. So, I don't really know. Jared seems to do well at it. Um, I've just, you know, you got to go through this process of applying and stuff. And I've never done that. So, I would, I would like to try it one time. I hear good things about it, but... It's not so much a comic con. It's like like all the comic artists or all the artists maybe are like in one hotel and then the other people are in another hotel. So it, I think it spans across. I think this year they added a hotel. So I think it's uh, five hotels instead of four. One of the uh, infectious disease guys I work with keeps saying I need to go out there and see it. Well, there, uh, it's also a big, um, a big cosplay uh, deal. My nephew, who is an attorney, um, he even gets into it, <laughs> which it always cracks me up when he's playing Harry Potter and he's like an attorney. I'm so, like, okay. Ken was uh, saying in regards to you talking about it being more of a traditional comic book or comic con. That's mm -hmm. the nice thing about smaller shows. He says, by no means is Hero Con small, but you know what he means. Yep, he loves I digging do. through the long boxes. Yep, I do exactly know what you mean, and that's what we have. In, that's what we have coming up here at uh, Daytona, April. April 13th and 14th. Lots of really good dealers who have books that you're not going to, you know, number one, they can't really afford tables at the bigger shows. 
So they, you know, that's why you see those guys coming to a lot of the smaller shows. And if you're a true comic collector, uh, that's where you're going to find the stuff is at the smaller shows. And I know what you mean about, you know, going through stuff because I've done it in Daytona and it's like I've been so tempted to buy books back um, that I let go out of my collection and I, I have to just resist because I got rid of them because I had too much stuff and now I'm thinking about, hey, I used to have this. I, I, I could get it right here. Look at the price. It's phenomenal. But I... um. So far, I've been good about it. I've also been good about the, I got to admit, if it was something that could, and I, and I kind of have to a small degree, thanks to Jacob, is uh, the Funko Pops. Man, those things are pretty cool. And inexpensive, so it's not like you're, you know, not like you're spending hundreds on one statue. But they're not really a statue. They're a little plastic toy, but they're they're really cool. Ten bucks is about right. Well, welcome back, AG. Hey, AG. AG had him some uh, pork chops and some sauerkraut. He says he loves digging through the long boxes, too. And, you know, that's one thing a lot of local comic book stores don't have anymore is a good back issue selection. Because there's so much stuff that's coming out new, they... You know, they try to keep up with that. They don't they don't have like the, uh, you know, Silver Age, Golden Age, Bronze Age, whatever. They have mostly current stuff. So good convention. You can uh, fill in a lot of gaps if that's what you're trying to do. Did you say you have one or two books you're trying to find, Ron? Oh, I always have books I'm trying to find. Yeah, but wasn't there like, is it, wasn't there something that's a fairly high end book you were telling me? And I can't remember what it is now. Was it, was it Hulk 181? Oh, no, that was, well, I mean, I'm obviously, I'm looking for that one. That was about that guy that bought that Hulk 180. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 180. Okay. That was kind of the peak appearance, right? Yeah, the last page. So you have a 181 though, right? No, no, no. I need to I need to get one. Not in my life yet. Maybe you showed me a Spider-Man book you're trying to get. It seems to me like there is something. You said this is this is the one I'm after. I showed you art. I've not told you about any particular comic I'm after. Okay. But there is a list. Oh, I'm sure there is. So Eldon is here now. He says he missed the dimly lit stores where you could dig for days. Boy, did we have one. If Craig was here, we'd talk about Jim Ivey's Cartoon Museum. Uh, that was like magic to us. And not only did he have the um, the old back issues, but he, he also had original art, and you never knew what he was going to have. Um, you know, a lot of the old strip cartoonists uh, retired down here in Florida, and he became friends with them because he was an editorial cartoonist. And uh, they would, you know, they would come in and sell him some originals and stuff. So C.C. Beck was down here. He had some of C.C. Beck's, like, uh, 
tissue paper uh, drawings that he would, you know, use to to draw his pages from. So really interesting stuff. Eldon says, so many stores in the Dallas area cater to gamers and comics almost become secondary. That's true. Um, however, uh, that um, uh, what did he say that the, the, the gamers and comics, okay, uh, so many stores in the Dallas area cater a lot of the stores are only staying open though because of the gaming believe it or not or at least that's you know around here that that seems to be you know the the saving grace it might be different there but well eldon said there's a few holdouts though and ray dog is in the room and he says what's up billy ray how you doing, my man? AG says, very nice store profile. Are you getting more comfortable doing that over the straight on headshots? Um, I like doing them. I think, you know, you can capture personality in a profile too. And there's certain things that tend to work well. Like, you know, I kind of like doing the side of Thor because he's got that big wing. Um, so I figured, you know, a profile might take me a little less time, but I think I can also make them just as interesting. So it's also kind of an exercise for me to, uh, to make something, you know, um, like I said, Jay Lee does it like almost, I'm going to say at least 90% of his sketches and I look at a lot of what he does and it's just phenomenal. So Eldon said that referring to the comic shop talk, uh, yes, that is very true. They've had to divers diversify to stay afloat. Yeah, yeah. they got to they got to rob Peter to pay Paul, <laughs> so to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. Ray Dog says he's just chilling. Eldon says he really likes your profiles. All right. I think I got, uh, let me see. Was Eldon, was he the guy? Okay, he got the Wolverine. Eldon, did you see the Wolverine I did for you last night? Because it was a profile shot, so. He did. All right, perfect. 
I think certain ones with, you know, that kind of mask or something, or, you know, like I said, Thor, it, uh, it can be an asset to do a profile. Elden said he couldn't make a live stream, but he did see it and it was very cool. Well, I appreciate it. And thanks for coming to this one, even though you couldn't make it last night to see yours. I do appreciate you dropping in. And Eldon, if you didn't know about the contest, I will be giving away a, uh, a free drawing tomorrow night to one, one winner. If you go back to episode one of the uh, Drawing Quickie Head Sketches episode one, uh, leave a comment on your favorite piece that I did in there, and there's a special little word after your comment. You put that word and then put, like, your choice of character, what you would want me to draw. And if you happen to be the lucky person that gets drawn, then I will do that character for you. It's a free giveaway tomorrow night. Now, he may have already entered. I don't know because I've had pretty good uh, on the um, on the comments. Can't remember them all. Well, Eldon said he's going to play catch up tomorrow morning. All right. Sounds great. Just want to make sure you uh, you're aware and that you can get in on it. He'll be down in the Beatty Art Archive. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if Jared never committed to yesterday. Maybe he's holding out. He's still looking for a better meme or gif. <laughs> There you go. He's scouring the internet for a perfect one. So he can have a nice retort. Because we, we put the pressure on him when we said he's always got the best ones. AG said he's going to commission you for a Tom Brady. He's really looking forward to seeing that piece get done live. <laughs> I, I had to uh, ad lib a little of what he was trying to come across with, but yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think he really should do that. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a good idea. Well, what would you do? You'd have to do it. Oh, yeah. I, I, well, you know. Likenesses are, are not my, my uh, specialty. It's Tom Brady. You, I mean, just put a dimple in the middle of his chin. <laughs> I would have you draw it, Ron. I'd pay you to do it, and then I'd say, okay, I did it. Right? Oh, no. I'm not trying to draw him. Well, that's the idea. Mine would... It, the line work, it would just be deflated. Uh. <laughs> uh, 
you mean it wouldn't be pretty? I would be hitting that paper so hard there'd be too many flags for me to... <laughs> Hey, speaking of Brady jokes, we haven't seen our friend Steven in a while. Oh, n none of those were jokes, though. I meant every word. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But I was just saying, Steve hasn't been around. Oh, he's a busy guy teaching yeah. all those children, having to grade homeworks, calculus or trig or whatever he's doing. And how the Patriots are the best team ever. Indoctrinating new little uh, New England Patriot fans. Like I said, I really think when when that team is dismantled, which it will be, yeah, all teams are. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a sad day. It's gonna be a sad day for. Uh, for the Patriots, once they start having 500 and below seasons, not going to the playoffs every year, not winning the division every year. Well, the thing is, they probably still won't take a 45-year drought like we have. Mm, I don't know. I, I mean, you never... have to think some of it starts from the owners of the organization. Yeah. Well, that craft guy won't be alive forever. He hasn't got 40 years left in him, does he? He might. Uh, Ross has not been doing a bang-up job. True. You know, I'd heard that they 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 might look into instituting some sort of uh, like where the coaches, if it, like the Brady call and the other call, like the coaches can use a flag to for like a ref call to have it re looked at and maybe overturned during the game. All right, but some of these games, man, because I had heard that literally. Is it Roger Goodall? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I heard this comes from the Howard Stern show. So, but it comes from one of their one of their guys that apparently he has the power to like have them replay that game or replay that part of the game from where the penalty would have happened. He could he could actually go in and reverse it, but it'll never happen. But wouldn't that be interesting? Hmm. I don't know. Hey, Eldon says, uh, and he's quoting this, so maybe it's coming from some source. A 10-year-old kid wins school science fair with a project claiming Tom Brady is a cheater. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Ron, do you, list, do you dislike Tom Brady as much as me? Clearly not. I think he, he is a, a great quarterback, and I would not ever have turned him away from our team. <laughs> well, I didn't say I would do that, but.
How about Belichick? Would you like him for a coach? I would. I would take it. Man. Some of the, the things that they've pulled off is because of his coaching. <laughs> the way he carries the program. Except what I don't get was uh, them still running with Josh Gordon. Mm, yeah. I mean, how many times did that guy get busted with drugs? And then <laughs> well, they, they take him in because they're going to give him that, you know, we're hard. Don't do that here. Change your life. He was probably like, okay, yeah, yeah, I will. And he's busted with drugs. But doesn't that kind of, you know, go back to the whole cheating thing, you know? He wasn't using drugs that would have aided his ability. I think his was just marijuana. Him and Ricky Williams. Yes, Ricky. If Ricky could have just stayed away from the ganja, we had a great running back. He's doing something coming up. Some yeah, kind of celebrity uh, show. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I I heard about that. I oh Big Brother, isn't it? Yes, that's it. Hey, Ashley Mall is here. That Thor is looking mighty fine. Yes, this is actually for Ashley. All right. Congratulations, Ashley. And I think that's about where I'm going to stop it before I go too far. That's looking good. Well, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm learning when to stop. Hashtag more lines. Hashtag no more lines. Now, Ashley, since you're in the room, <clears throat> I had a request for two Captain Americas, which are done. So I'm going to show you both. I'm going to let you choose because I don't think. Let me be fair. Let me make sure the other person is not in the room also. Uh, Jason had had uh, had ordered a cap. Well, so, Ashley says, thank you so Go ahead. Oh, thank you, Ashley. All right, so <clears throat> let me um let me go ahead and get rid of a little bit of this red. I actually drew these. Um, I had to go get Bell and Jacob, and I wanted to get them drawn. Usually I draw these live, but um, I was only going to do three tonight, so I'm only doing three. I'm saving two more for tomorrow. Um, so we'll be we'll be done here in, in just a few minutes. So I want to thank everybody for coming out um, and for supporting me. And doing this it, it you know it was a nice thing i don't know how you all got on the uh the big cartel page so quickly it was pretty amazing because i didn't even tweet it out i just suddenly i published it and i don't know i started getting orders and i had to stop it because uh, within five minutes i i literally had my five and i was like i better hit the um stop or I might start getting more and not that that's a bad thing but I just kind of want to keep them in groups of maybe three five is a bit much on the uh, weekdays <clears throat> um, so maybe three might be better or you know I, I can still do five depending but okay Ashley so we have your Thor I always sound like I'm I'm lisping when I we have your Thor <laughs> Now, we have this Captain America. Let me uh, tip it up so it's straight. 
got kind of a yelling expression on his face, like a, you know, whatever. And then we have this one. So I will let you pick which Captain America you want. We'll call the one with the blacks on the suit, number one, and the ones with the black behind him, number two. Oh, she refreshed my page by luck. Huh, that's so funny. Well, good timing. So the, the one with the blacks on the costume is number one. This is number two. Which cap would you like me to put with your Thor piece? Na, 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 na. One, two. Here, I'll do my animation. Dun, 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 dun. Well, we're in for a treat tonight. Number one, right? Okay. So I am going to write... Uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, man, I just Isn't had it. Jason? A, yeah, Jason. Thank you, Ron. Man, you, you are like so much better than Sable. All right. So this one goes to Dallas and... These two are yours, Ashley, and that will end the drawing for tonight. Um, Ashley, if you don't know about the contest, uh, you're still eligible for a free one tomorrow. If you go watch episode number one uh, and you comment, um, and you and you comment on which piece you liked. And then there's a little secret word, and then put the character you want me to draw. Uh, we're having a drawing for that, no pun intended, tomorrow, and I will do uh, both. Thanks, AG. I appreciate it. So let everyone know, you know, uh, whoever is in the room, if you haven't entered the contest yet, you have till tomorrow night. Um, well, not quite till tomorrow night, but reasonable tomorrow night before we go live, um, to get your comment in and your choice. And then we're going to put it in a randomizer and pick out a lucky winner to receive a free sketch. So I am going to go ahead and wrap it up now because it is 931 and Ron and I both are sorely lacking in some much needed rest. But we appreciate you. Um, hey, thank you, Ashley. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kaz. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, well, maybe two contests. I would, but I got two more drawings to do tomorrow night. So everybody have a good evening. Thanks for coming out. Uh, please feel free on your way out to give a thumbs up and leave a comment comments are good uh, i enjoy getting them and i try to reply to them as soon as possible even if and, it's just to say thank you hey you are at 160. oh on subscribers yeah so wow hey great thanks. thanks daz 1330 thanks david um just saw you all in here uh so keep up with the channel. Yeah, thanks for the subscriptions. And um, hey, we're going to bounce. We will see you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Or at least I will. Hopefully Ron can get in here sometime and, and help me out. Uh, if not, it might get a little crazy. Take care, everyone. See you tomorrow.